Hey y'all, let's take a quick peek at square roots again. And the first thing is very quickly, if some, the square roots of four, you can say that negative two times negative two is four, and that two times two is four. But generally when you see this, what they're referring to is the positive answer. So in other words, if you see the square root of four, that you'll go, oh, that's two, okay? Even though negative two squared and that positive two squared are both two, we're generally referring to the positive answer on that one. Um, you don't even have to think about these. Uh, you don't need to go through any rigmarole on this at all. Uh, in other words, if you had to go, oh, the square root of four squared, that would be the square root of four times the square root of four. We know from our past uh, experience with these that that's the same thing as the square root of 16 because you multiply four by four. Oh, the square root of 16, the answer is four. So, but you don't have to think about that. If anything times itself under a radical is squared, it's just the number under the radical. You don't need to go through all the rigmarole of going 71 times 71 and find the square root. No, the answer to this is just 71. The answer to this one is 3.82, okay? Good luck doing that one uh, on paper or whatever, okay? So pause and copy. And, okay, let's take a look at this. An equation, it doesn't matter what funky stuff is on there at all. You still have one objective. You want to get x by itself on one side of the equation. Everything else goes to the right. And remember, uh, remember the rule, uh, if you add seven to one side of an equation, you add seven to the other side of the equation. If you subtract 13 from one side of the equation, you subtract 13 from the other side of the equation. If you multiply the left by five, you multiply the right by five and so on. It's the exact same thing with this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, isolate the x by itself. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to move this three over to the right to get negative three. And of course, on the left, we just have x minus two, right? Fair, okay. How can we get it to where it just has x minus two by itself, no radical sign? Well, the answer is we're gonna square it, okay? And of course, if we square this side, we square the right side as well, <coughs> okay? So remember, you know, anything squared just becomes that number, under, under the radical, becomes that number. So we don't have to think at all about what the answer is to the left. It's just x minus two. That's it. This positive three times positive three is nine. Now, the next thing we do is, now we know how to do this, right? You've done a million of those. So the answer is we add two to both sides. We have x equals 11. Boom, there we go. Okay. The weird thing is though, is because we have moved this over, turned it into a negative and then squared it, which turns it into a positive, Every single one of these equations that you do with a radical, you're going to have to check it to make sure it is a legit answer, all right? So you're gonna to have to put in 11 back into the original equation and see if it actually works or if we've kind of made this funky answer that doesn't really work at all. So let's do that now. So square root of x, which is 11, minus two plus three should be zero, okay? So 11 minus two, of course, that's gonna be nine. The square root of nine is three. Three plus three is equal to zero. Uh-oh, doesn't work, right? What that tells us is that there really isn't any answer that works at all for this. So you can put a zero with a slash through it, or you can put NS, or whatever you want to put, or you can just, you know, that means no solution. And of course, don't forget how we abbreviate we don't want to waste our time writing the entire thing. So like maybe like half the end is in a period. Kind of abbreviation. All right. Let's try another one. Pause and copy if you want to. Okay, same deal. We're going to get this out of the way first so we can square both sides and come up with just this squared. So we're going to have this squared of x minus 2 equals positive 6. Okay, then to get rid of this, we square it. And of course, we do the same thing over here too, right? Okay, so on the left side is gonna be x minus two. On the right side, six squared is 36, right? So let's get this over there. So x is equal to 38. And again, we have to check and see if this works, all right? So let's take this entire equation and redo it. So the square root of 38 minus two, then minus six should equal zero if it works. 38 minus two is 36. The square root of 36 is six. Minus six equals zero, yep, that works. So that means this is a legit answer. Okay, all right, let's try another one. 
awesome copy if you need to. Okay, well, that's kind of strange. A little different, right? There's a square there, okay? We're, we're still in good shape. Don't forget, you take this and move the five, negative 5 over, it becomes this, right? Okay, you ready? We're going to square both sides. Now, this is not complicated. Remember, we don't have to wonder what the answer to this is and go through all this stuff and go, oh, wait, that's going to be x to the, the oh, oh, we have to, no. All it is, is if you square something that is a square root, the answer is what's underneath the radical. So it still works. So x squared minus, uh, excuse me, plus 9 is equal to 25, right? Okay, so let's try this. x squared is equal to 25 minus 9, which is 16. Now, we've done these before, right? Okay, a number squared is 16. We're going to have to say the answer is plus or minus 4. Two answers, okay? Let's check them. Does it work? We'll see. Okay. So let's try first off positive 4. All right. So positive 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 9 minus 5 is equal to 0. Well, 16 plus five, uh, 9, excuse me, is 25. So we know the square root of 25 is 5, right? Minus 5, does that equal 0? Yep. And we don't have to even try the second one. We know negative 4 times negative 4 in this original one will also be positive 16 and all that. So yes, these are legit answers. We're good to go. Okay. All right. Try one more. Go ahead and copy and uh, pause and copy that. Now the weird thing about this is we have two terms that we're going to have to like over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the square root of x minus 1. That's on the left side. Over here we have 3 and then minus x. Okay. We are going to have to square both sides again. And we are going to have to square this. Now, a real quick note. Don't get confused and go, oh, just if we square that, that just means 3 squared, 9, minus, oh, x squared. That's my answer. No, 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 no. You're going to have to actually go through the process of squaring this, which means multiply it by itself. All right? But it's okay. We've done this before. We're, we're not in a big, big, uh, no big deal. So... We know the answer to this automatically is x minus 1. We don't have to think about it. This, let's do this together. We have a 9. All right? Then we have 3 minus, excuse me, 3 times negative x. That's negative 3x. Then we have a negative x times 3. That's another negative 3x. So we have negative 6x. All right? Then we have x times x. Well, that's x squared. Okay? All right. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and flip this completely so it looks like this. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals x minus 1. Okay? It's okay. Now that might look intimidating to you because it's long and it has an x squared in there. Ooh. But these, believe me, they, they've made these problems all nice and uh, tidy for you to do. So where you look at them and you go, oh no, what do I do? Well, don't forget how to factor, right? We know three ways of factoring. Remember all of them? Okay. Keep keep that in mind. Okay, so let's stick with our x squared. We're going to go over here and we'll have a negative x and negative 6x is negative 7x, okay? We're going to go yoink over here. That's going to be a positive 1 plus 9, which gives you positive 10. That's going to equal now zero because there's nothing left on the right side all right now they are whenever you see a trinomial like this in one of these problems guarantee you you're going to be able to factor it so all you need to do is go okay i need to figure out what two numbers don't forget x and x they add to give me negative seven and they multiply to give me positive ten well if you have two numbers that add to give you a negative and they multiply to give you a positive i guarantee you it's two negatives all right so what two numbers are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at no two numbers because there's nothing there yet, but you know, you, you tell me the two numbers. Five and two, right? Okay. And you can probably very quickly, we'll, we'll just do it just to make sure. So that means x minus five is zero, and that means x minus two is zero, which means you have two answers. Positive five and positive two, those are your answers. Okay, let's just check to make sure this is legit though, right? So we say, it is 5 and 2. I'm going to change colors here so you can see this a little more. And I'm going to, I'm going to erase a little bit up here. 
Okay, so let's take a look. I should have changed colors after I erased. Anyway, okay, so let's just stick it in here. Uh, we have x minus 1. Let's just put a 5 in there. So 5 minus 1 minus 3 plus x, that's going to be plus 5, equals 0. All right, well, let's see. 5 minus 1, did I do that right? Minus 3 minus 5. Okay, yeah. So 5 minus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 3 plus 5, does that equal 0? 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus 5. Hmm, that doesn't equal 0, so that doesn't work. All right, let me try another one. I'll use a different color. Let's try the other one. We say it's 2. So let's go ahead and re rewrite this equation over here. So I have 2 minus 1 minus 3 plus x, which is a 2. That equals 0. So we have 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 3 plus 2. What's that? So that's negative 2 plus 2. Does that equal 0? Yes, it does. So that means your only solution is 2. Okay, that's how this works. Again, real quickly, for this type, you go ahead and over the negative 3 and the plus 6, and you get something like this. You know, it's going to be uh, 3 minus x. You're going to want to square both sides just like you always do. But don't forget, you have to actually go through the process of squaring this and figuring out everything. Okay? Once you get it to this point, if you want, I mean, you don't have to flip this. I always kind of like to look left to right like I'm reading. So all I did was I just put these three things over here like this. Just to me, it's easier to go left to right. Okay. Then I move this over to the other side. So now we're, we're good. All I did then was to move this X over here with the other six X and move this number over here with the nine. Now I got this equation. Now you have done ones like this before, so that shouldn't be a big deal. In other words, you've taken a couple of steps to go ahead and make this wacky looking thing into something right here that you're more familiar with. And anytime you see a trinomial like that, guarantee you, you're going to be able to factor it into two things. And when you see those two, you go, oh, yep, that's going to be 5 and 2. In fact, you don't even have to do this part at all if you don't want to. You can see that those are the two the answers, 5 and 2. But don't forget to check. Don't forget to check. Fortunately, they don't have a ton of these uh, problems for you because they take a little bit longer, but I think you'll be in good shape. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Could this be the worst of all? Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Pause and copy if you need to. Okay, well, I, this is nothing. You just, you, you just square both sides. Who cares if there's a square root on both sides, right? You square them both. Doink. And there we go. 2x minus 3 equals x plus 2. Well, you, if you saw that in blue, you, you'd think that was easy. Okay, that goes over here. That becomes an x. The 3 goes over there. That becomes a 5. Boom. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's check it in the original, okay? The square root of 2x, which means 2 times 5, 10 minus 3. Ugh, what's the square? Uh oh, this is looking weird. Okay, plus the square root of 5 plus 2. Oop, 5 plus 2. Well, 10 minus 3 is the square root of 7. Does the square root of 7 equal the square root of 7? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so that works. Don't even, you don't need to know what that is. Who cares? Okay, good enough? All right. Give practice problem A a whirl, and uh, don't forget to check it. You got to check it to make sure it works, then come back. All right, here it is. X minus 6, and I'm putting the 3 over here. I'm squaring both of them. So I get X minus 6 is equal to 9. I move the X, excuse me, the 6 over, that becomes 15. That's my answer, we think. Let's try it in here. The square root of 15 minus 6 minus 3, does it equal 0? That means the square root of 9 minus 3 equals 0. 3 minus 3 equals 0. Yep, that works. Okay, all right. Pause it and try B, and let's see if that works. Okay, this is interesting here, but we, you know, we've got it. We're just going to move this whole thing over to the right. So we get this is our new equation. x minus 6 is equal to 6 minus x. The square root is x minus 6. Okay. We square both sides, which means that's it times itself. Don't forget, you've got to actually go through the motions of doing this. Don't just write, oh, 36 minus x squared, because you're missing two terms. Okay. We know this will be x minus 6 on the left. That's a piece of cake. 
On the right, we go 6 times 6, 36. 6 times negative x, negative 6x. All right, done with that. But there's another negative x times 6, another negative 6x. That gives us negative 12x. The last thing is negative times a negative, which is a positive x squared. Okay? I really dislike, you know, feeling like I'm looking at something backwards. And you don't have to do this, by the way. I just do this. Okay? Um, so I'm going to put x squared minus 12x plus 36, which is this side. I just kind of rearranged it a little bit. Equals x minus 6. Okay, now let's kind of chunk this over. Let's get this over first. So I got x squared minus, that's going to be a negative 1, minus 12 is negative 13. All right, I got a 6, it moves over. I mean, I add 6 to 36, that's 42, that equals 0. Okay, and again, promise you um, that these will always factor out. They, they make them nice and neat for you. Okay, so I need two numbers that add up to negative 13 and also multiply to 42. Well, that means I'm going to have to go a negative and a negative, and it is negative 6 and negative 7. And you can probably tell immediately that those two answers are going to be 6 and 7. Or are they? Let's see. Let's try now. I'll use a different color here. How about purple? All right, let's try this out and see what we get. All right, the square root, I'll try 6 first. The square root of 6 minus 6, that's 0. So 0 minus 6 plus x, that means plus 6. Does that equal 0? Yeah, it is, right? Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. That works. Let's try 7. Uh, the square root of 7 minus 6, 7 minus 6 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Okay, minus 6, and then let's put plus x, you know, plus 7. Does that equal 0? 1 minus 6 is negative 5, plus x. No, that doesn't equal. So 7 doesn't work. So 6 is the only answer. There you go. Okay. See you guys next time. Hope you have a good day.